Can you do that like that way? Search the whole structure? Yeah. I suppose you could, but Rosetta is not designed to do that. I mean, it would take, you'd have to do a lot of sampling. <laughs> so um, generally, we have a, a pretty good idea of where the interface is. Mm -hmm. And the better you can define your interface, of course, the less sampling you're going to have to do. Um, what question? Can you show us the scoring function? The scoring function? Yeah, um, definitely. So, I've, um, I've mentioned this to uh, a few of you um, here today. Um, now it's going to be different for you, but you, you'll go to your um, database location. Wherever your database is, you go to scoring and weights, you go to ligand.weights, and you'll see all these weights. <coughs> and uh, these are the weights that we use for ligand docking. So um, uh, if, if, uh, I mean, if you're interested in how we weight them, how we weight the different score terms during ligand docking, some, one thing that I found, and I'll be I'm writing a paper on this, is for a certain class of proteins, you may improve your results if you optimize your weights just for these certain types of interactions. So I'm, I, I did HIV protease docking, and I optimized my, my um, I, I knew the right answer for, you know, I knew the correct, um, the correct answer, because I had all these crystal structures, and I optimized the weights to give me, to predict the correct answer, and then I look at other models where I don't have the answer, you know. So, so you can optimize these weights for your particular system. Um, the answer to your question. Yes. More or less. There. Uh, I mean, how many, folks? How many uh, targets that you use to, to get this uh, constant? This. Um, well, I didn't come up with these uh, with these weights, so I'm not sure how they how these weights were actually derived. Um, um, so I I'm I'm not sure. I mean. A lot, of, a lot of these weights are historical. They're from they're, they were used previously, and those people used them from got these weights from somebody else. And so, it is very useful to to re-optimize weights. And we're not talking about today, but there's actually a um, some some code written in Rosetta to help you optimize your weights. So, and how many atoms uh, you can get in the box and number of atoms in black? Um, you can. Rosetta will handle as big as you want. Um, I mean, you can go so as big as you want. Well, but well, yeah, there's actually, our next tutorial is about protein so protein. Okay. If, you go, if you use series on your feet, so you can go. You could, but um, protein protein docking is, is optimized for that purpose. Um, one of the things is, um, as it's written, generally your, your small molecule is just one residue. And so, in Rosetta 3.2, your small molecule, it, if it's multiple, like if it's a chain of residues, you want to use the side, you don't, you want to do um, repacking of all of your side chains and you have a backbone, you know. So you can't repack the side chains in a ligand uh, if you're representing it like a protein. Um, but if you have a very large ligand, um, you have to think about the flexibility of that ligand. If it's a rigid ligand, then it's easier. If it has many rotatable bonds, you know, a lot more sampling to do. So, just a thing to think about. Um, but, uh, so, I've talked about this. Uh, okay, so to this tutorial, and I'll let Jordan go in a few minutes here, but you guys pull out um, your, your packets. This tutorial is called Ligand Docking Example Problem. And um, because we don't, we don't really have a lot of time to go through this right now, um, I'm going to let Jordan do this protein protein document, but I'm going to just talk about it for a second. Um, in ligand docking, there's a lot of prep work in preparing your files. Um, so I, this goes through an example where we have, we have um, two, we have a protein, um, 2Q5K, and it's a wild type HIV protease bound to lopinavir, an HIV protease inhibitor. And what we're, what we're studying, or what our goal for this tutorial is, is to predict 
how a mutant proteases, we, which we assume we don't have the structure to, this um, double mutant, um, the valine 82 to 3, 3D, and isoleucine, the valine solution 84. This double mutant, how that's going to bind to um, sequinavir. So we have a different ligand and a slightly different uh, protein sequence, double mutant. And we're going to go through this tutorial and, and dot this other ligand. Um, we have, so just if you look through these numbers, we have um, number two um, is, step two is generating a, a um, file for sequinavir that has all the confirmations in it. Um, and I don't use Rosetta software to do that, so you, that's, the, that's kind of a tricky part because you have to find another piece of software that generates confirmations for small molecules. And I use Mo. Um, and other people use Open I Omega. And there's a lot of other ones out there. Um, step three is um, generating a params file. And params files are, are every residue, every amino acid residue, alanine and tryptophan and all, that, all of them, have their own params files that are found in the Rosetta database. But for ligands, you have to generate special params files for your ligand. And there's a script that lets you do that. And if you find the, um, the, sor the Rosetta source directory, and you go to this, this directory, source, Python, apps, public, mole file for params, you type minus minus help when you run that. You'll get a lot of output that'll help you understand how to run that script and produce a dot params file. And then you're going to feed that into Rosetta with your docking study. Um, turn the page. Um, step five is just about preparing the PDBs. The only thing about that, I'll say, we've talked about how to clean up the PDB. Steven's talked about that. We have a script called Clean PDB. But it, get rid it gets rid of your head atoms. So you have to um, grab, you have to copy the head atom. You, after you clean your PDB, you have to go back to the original PDB, get the head atoms that you want for the ligand that you want to dock, and put them back in your PDB. So um, that's just one step um, that you got to do for ligand docking. Um, step six is um, talking about how I created the protease mutant by modifying my PDB. Um, in, in a more complicated step, in a co more complicated example, step six would be we include loop modeling. If you didn't have the, the structure of the protein you're docking, you'd have to do some loop modeling or some, some different types of comparative modeling. Um, so step seven, um, that's just switching lopinavir for sequinavir because we want to dock the right the right structure. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention in here: the red text. Um, a lot of times you want to, you have, in a real docking study, you don't have the answer. But sometimes we want to test Rosetta ligand and just see how it works and see how good it is. So if you have the correct answer, the steps in red would help you to know how to, um, how to compare Rosetta's results with the correct answer. So that's what the steps in red are for. Um, so now if you, Go to step nine. Um, this is the docking options file, um, and um, the only thing I'll say about the docking options file is that um, there's this special format called Atom Tree Diff, and um, if you don't want to use it, you can just exclude that flag, and you'll get PDB output. A lot of people I just prefer PB out because it's easier to work with. The atom tree disks are a lot more compact. If you have issues with file or with uh, disk space, you want to use those. Um, and uh, if you do use them, then you'll have to extract those PDBs later on. A lot of times what we do is we just produce these thousands of models. We only extract from the atom tree diff file the best models that we're interested in, in docking or in uh, analyzing. So I want to go over step 10 um, in more detail. Step 10 is sort of the most important step. The tutorial's 
directory under the Lincoln docking is there. So there's an XML file. And so um, XML, um, Rosetta XML is a great new tool. And I have um, three slides here real quickly that just talk about XML. Um, there's hundreds of XML components, and you can mix and match to create a custom protocol. And you can combine elements from de novo folding, loop modeling, protein-protein docking, protein ligand docking, protein design. You can combine all these different elements into a custom protocol.